three wild boar hunts, and a behind the scenes look at what it's like to be a professional hunting guide in Texas. And here's a quick hint, it's not all fun and games. That's what we've got coming up on this video. So follow along and let's have a good time. So in this video, I took a trip to one of my favorite states to hunt, Texas. And I was heading down there to meet up with a friend of mine named Jason Meisenheimer, who runs Team Swamp Stomp LLC. Now, Jason and I met about a year ago. I went to Oklahoma to do some filming with him and some of his guys that were running a hunt up there. And I had never hunted wild boar this way before. They're doing it with dogs and they're killing the boars with a knife. Um, to be honest with you, when I first uh, when I first started watching videos about this style of hunting, I wasn't really into it. But once I went there with Jason, and I met him, I met his guys, I met the dogs, the other hunters that he had, and we started hunting, it was, it was awesome. It was so much fun. And I told Jason that the next time I see him, I'm gonna come and I'm gonna hunt boar with him with a knife. So that's what I did. <clears throat> um, I went down to Texas and I met up with Jason and he told me to come a couple days early from our hunt because he had some other hunters that were coming and he said that if I wanted to come along and run a camera or just come and watch the hunts that I was welcome to do so. So how am I going to pass up an opportunity like that? So what we got today is the first hunt we'll start off with uh, was a gentleman, I believe his name was James. Um, James was from Texas and he was coming to Jason's yeah, house to do a thermal hog hunt at night. So the whole hunt starts with him getting there and uh, we kind of hung out a little bit and grabbed some food. And as it got dark, then Jason got the, the rifle out for him and uh, we went through some, some safety procedures of what to expect when we're out in the woods and uh, Jason started looking at his phone. Um, on his phone he had trail camera pictures and was getting real-time updates. So we went to the first, uh, the first spot and we were just kind of hanging out in the car as it got dark, but unfortunately nothing happened. So uh, no pigs showed up on his camera. This close. Yeah. As we sat around there for about a half an hour just talking in the car and and uh, just telling hunting stories and getting to know each other, Jason's phone buzzes and he's got a boar at a different camera. So we turn around, we head out of that property and we start heading to the next property. So as we get to this property, it's dark out. Uh, I have a handheld thermal monocular that I just started using. Uh, Jason had a handheld ther thermal scanner as well, and the hunter had a thermal scope, but for safety reasons, he's not glassing around with the scope. He's just walking kind of in the dark, um, which, which made for interesting movements through uh, the woods. It just so happened that this, this trip out there, the wind was just right, so we could get in, into this uh, spot without the boar smelling us. So. Let's kind of follow along with the action here as James and Jason are getting set up and getting ready to take the shot. Power that scope on. I couldn't tell, but it was right in that creek bottom where I thought they might be. So I'd just rather be ready if we go down.
Okay, so the bore is down. The only problem is it doesn't look like the bore died right away. Um, so in order to minimize the danger since it's dark out and there's only one rifle, Jason heads back to his truck to get his dog and a knife. And um, his dog, Lieutenant Dan, is, is kind of famous down there. He's a, a little, um, a, some sort of terrier, but the dog is fearless when it comes to pigs. And you'll see a little bit more of Lieutenant Dan as we go along. So when Jason leaves, uh, myself and James there, we're, we're talking a little bit and I'm asking him kind of how it felt. This is the first time he's ever uh, killed a boar and it's the first thing he's ever shot with a thermal scope at night. So we're talking a little bit, usual said, stuff. All right, go ahead, take your shot. And I just hit the refresh button on the camera. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, right. I mean, he was, he was still where he had to be, I'd say, after, uh, after it refreshed and the rest is history there. Yeah. This is the first pig you ever killed? This is my first pig, yeah. I can't wait to see him. Yeah, just hoping he doesn't get up and run away here. I haven't seen him. Either. I don't think so. Jason gave James instructions to watch the boar, and if the boar gets up, shoot him again. So as James is watching the boar, I'm scanning with the handheld thermal, and I look off to the right, and lo and behold, there's a coyote right at the edge of the woods. So here's the the exchange and and uh, and the quick change of what was going on while well, we decided to try and take this coyote. Should I take him now? Yeah, go ahead, shoot it. It took off to the right. Yeah. I think that was a coyote. That was a coyote. <laughs> I don't think I got him there. He was behind that tree. Yeah, I don't think you hit it either, because I think I, I think I heard I you hit a tree. But he dropped down when you shot. That's Okay, well, the coyote didn't go <laughs> as planned, and unfortunately, James missed a shot. Um, from when he first shot at it, and the coyote dropped, uh, the coyote hunched down. I, looking through the thermal, I thought he hit it at first, but then watching the, the coyote take off and run, it was pretty apparent that he missed it. Uh, we did go over there and look for a little bit of blood um, once Jason came back, but we didn't find anything. Uh, so Jason comes back, and we... Uh, he sends his dog down there and the dog finds the boar and, and uh, we go and finish the boar off safely. And as you, you'll see why safety is a concern because of the, the teeth this boar had. Okay. Right here. And just don't let him get a hold of you. Push, push, rub it around. Just rub it all around. You're making a smoothie. So now it's nighttime. Um, it's dark. I don't know exactly what time it was. Probably 10 o'clock at night, 10:30. We scored and got a nice boar. Now some more work begins. We get the boar out. We get it loaded in the vehicle. We head back to Jason's house, and um, as the hunter is getting uh, his cooler ready and and you know changing his shoes and we're taking some pictures of the boar and getting some good shots because he was a really nice boar. Now the work starts and Jason's got to go and get this pig, hang it up, um, start skinning it. Uh, the hunter decided he wanted to get this boar mounted, so we had to cape it out and he also wanted the meat from the pig so once it's caped now it's got to be quartered and uh, packed in the cooler and the hunter's on his way he's going to stop and get some ice and throw it on the meat and he's heading home and now that that's all over the guide who is still doing this for work and uh, not fun has to clean up some of the tools get rid of the carcass um, clean up the, the vehicle and put a few things away before he can head off to bed. And um, I think it was around midnight by the time we got, uh, by the time we hit the rack and started getting some rest. So that's the first evening down and already got one boar down. 
and it was a, a fun hunt. It was the first time I'd ever been along on a thermal hunt. The first time I got to play with my uh, thermal scanner, which was a good time. And Jason tells me that, okay, well, tomorrow morning at about six in the morning, I've got a group of hunters showing up and we're going to do a dog hunt. So go to bed at midnight, get up at five and let's start the next day. Okay, so now it's the next morning. We get up at five to get ready. Um, so Jason's awake and, and has some stuff ready for when these guys are showing up. They show up at six o'clock. This group of guys, I can't remember exactly where they from, where they were from. I think they came from different areas, but they were a great group of guys. They had a good time. Um, they were fun. They liked to have fun. Unfortunately, I can't remember their names because there was, I think, six of them and I'm horrible with names anyways, but we did have a good time. We got set up, Jason gave him some, uh, some basic instructions of what we were gonna be doing, and we headed out to meet up with a friend of Jason's named Frank Mitchell. Now Frank has some dogs and he works with Jason uh, at Team Swamp Stomp, and whenever they get a big dog hunt, Frank brings his dogs. So we met up with Frank, and uh, let's take a quick look and I'll introduce you to some of his dogs. Okay, so far we've got two guides, six hunters, me floating around with a camera, and a bunch of dogs. But the dogs are really the star of the show. They're the ones that do all the work. So they cast the dogs out, the dogs take off, and we're walking along and Frank's tracking the dogs on a handheld um, GPS. Jason also has a same sort of system with a tracking collar and a dog, but his goes to his phone. And we're kind of walking along and following the dogs. And I think we were walking for about a half an hour and not much is happening. And all of a sudden, Jason is waving, come on up, come on up. And I come running up there with the camera and I come around the corner and there's like four pigs just standing in the middle of the trail and they take off running. So now they turn a couple dogs loose on them. The pigs go inside a little head of woods. The catch dog is already loose looking for them. The, the pigs are in there, there's dogs in there. And now the hunters, we don't, we don't know what's happening because we don't know where the pigs are gonna go. The pigs aren't bayed yet. And Jason and I are trying to angle and get some footage. Well, the dogs finally bayed one of the pigs in there, actually two of the pigs in that little head of woods. They caught the catch dog again, which is the, the pit bulls or the muscle dogs. And Jason and I get into position on each side of the pig as they turn the catch dog loose. So let's take a look and see what happens when the catch dog gets in there and heads after the pig.
Come out right here. Come out right here. Well, that was pretty crazy. So as you can see from the footage, we both had close calls in this event. The catch dog, um, I'm gonna remember his name, but after I'm done filming, I'm sure. He jumped through the woods, jumped over the log, and jumped on that pig's back. And unfortunately, the, he missed the pig, and the pig broke and ran. And it came straight at Jason. It turned around, went the other way, came straight at me. And then it turned around and it ran out, and it ran right in between all the hunters and took off with dogs chasing after him. So now, as that broke up, there was another pig in there with him. And after about 15, 20 minutes or so, one of Frank's puppies, which Frank was adulting uh, proud papa at this, one of Frank's puppies bait a pig in the thicket by himself. So we had to hurry up and try and get to that dog to help the dog and uh, also to kill the pig quickly so the pig doesn't have a chance of hurting the dog. So now we're taking off and we're gonna go get that pig. So let's get this pig and let's see what we come up with. As you can see, they got their first pig of the trip. Now, it wasn't a real huge pig, but it was still exciting and fun, especially as thick of area we were in. You know, you could hear the dog and the pig in there, but you can't see anything yet until you almost step on the thing. And that's where a lot of the danger comes for the guides. They've got to be the first one in there, and they've got to leg the pig so the hunter can, can uh, make a quick, clean kill on, on the pig. So we got this pig down. We got some pictures with the pig. Uh, everybody was kind of congratulating each other and, and reliving the moment and the excitement. And we realized that the dogs had the original big boar bayed about a mile away. So now we got to get out of here quick, get back in the vehicles, drive around to where we can, and get on this pig. As we get out of the vehicle, we've got to hop a fence. We got to head down this field, and of course, it's rare that I've seen so far where the pigs get bayed in the open, and as usual, this pig was back in the thicket somewhere. So we had to cross another barbed wire fence. We had now, and again, keep in mind, we've got eight guys with us and a couple dogs. Cross the barbed wire fence, get through the woods until we get a little bit closer, and as Jason and I both spread to get different angles on this, um, they realize that the pig is bayed up in the water. And Jason even said on the way in there, he said, this pig had some time to rest and he's probably going to want to fight again. So just be really careful. So they turn the catch dog loose. The catch dog gets in there and the guide is right behind him. And one of the other aspects that you don't realize um, uh, that I notice as a guide is Jason is not only watching out for his own safety because he almost already got run over one time, he's also got to watch out for the hunters and what they're doing. And what happened here is Jason 
didn't know the guy's name, and he told him to back up, back up. The guy didn't realize he was talking to him, and Jason kind of had to get loud with him and, and physically grab him and pulled him. What Jason saw is something that I didn't see, and neither did the hunter, is that pig was fighting the dogs, and he was facing us, and they'll usually run straight ahead. So if that pig decided to break loose and got loose of those dogs, he was going to come straight at that hunter, and... Uh, You'll see in a second why Jason was so concerned for the, the hunter and his safety after we get this pig taken care of. So let's, let's get to some of the action. Um, I'm going to warn you, it's, um, it's pretty raw and it's, it's pretty vicious. And if you don't want to see it, then you should probably turn, your, uh, turn this video off now. I'm going to cut out some of the... Uh, some of the bloodiness of it, because I don't like to romanticize it or, or um, pump it up to be more than it is. It's a human being with a knife killing an animal, um, and it's, it's pretty vicious. So let's, uh, let's see what happens with this big old boar. Be careful, come on. Somebody get the legs of Frank. Come on, I need a knife man. Hurt somebody get in here and stab it, please. Go, 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 go. Farther back. Push it in. Right there, push. Push. Rub it around. Leave it in, put it back in. Get him again. Push it in, leave it in, and cut him down. Like you're cutting more. Get him again. All right, they got their second pig down. And as you can see from the teeth on that pig, now you can understand why Jason was so concerned with where that hunter was standing and how he was so close to that pig, especially with that pig. He's on the business end of that pig, and that pig, if he wants to run and fight, he's going to run and fight. Um, so it's another little glimpse of what it takes to be a good guide and understand and be able to read a situation that's unfolding and happening in front of you in a matter of seconds and things are changing and happening and you've got to watch out for yourself, your dogs, your fellow guide and six hunters that are in the woods with you all trying to see, be the first one there to see the action and get involved with it. So that was, it was, um, it was something else that you don't think about as a hunter, especially me not being that experienced with hog hunting. I'm used to deer hunting where it's not all that dangerous. Uh, so it was, it was interesting. It was awesome. It was exciting. The pig was a, a beast. He was a fighter. Um, he did rough up a couple of the dogs. And uh, at that point, we decided just to kind of call the trip and um, get, it, get, everybody, yeah, get everybody back out of the woods. And you know, take some pictures with this pig first, of course, and, and everybody's high-fiving and shaking hands. And as you can see on everybody's face, it's all smiles because it's exciting and fun. But now, these guys are done for the morning. We're gonna go back to the camp. And uh, while we're at camp, we're playing around a little bit. Jason's got some, some knives to throw at a board, which uh, <laughs> we weren't that great at, and some uh, axes to throw as well. He cooked us an awesome breakfast. So while we get to relax, the guide and his wife are now preparing a meal for eight guys. And the uh, hunters now headed off for the afternoon. They were coming back later on in the afternoon to do a thermal hunt. And just when I thought it was going to be the perfect time to uh, catch a few hours sleep and relax, uh, Jason tells me, nope, we got to go bait up some spots for the nighttime thermal hunt. Um, so while the hunters get to go and relax, and I think Jason's wife got to go and relax. We had to go out to a couple different spots and um, spread some corn out and get things ready for the evening hunt. I think Jason also checked a couple cameras to make sure everything was working properly. And then we finally got to go back to the house, catch a couple hours shut eye before the next hunt. So now the same hunters come back again. <clears throat> They're back for an evening thermal hunt. 
And another thing that you don't really realize um, when you're thinking about guiding and hunting is Jason potentially was supposed to have eight people show up and I think only uh, five of them came for this hunt. You've got to have equipment for five guys to use. So he's got to get five rifles set up. He's got to make sure that all five of the thermal scopes on him are charged and working properly. You've got to have five sets of shooting sticks for everybody to shoot off of. And now you've got to have enough equipment and manpower. So Jason called his dad in to give a hand um, helping guide these guys and, and show them what to do to safely manage five, six, seven hunters all at one time. And uh, so the hunters came back. We, uh, they sat down for a couple minutes and watched a quick safety video that, that Jason made to explain exactly how things were gonna happen during the hunt and uh, also to kind of teach them a little bit of the way Jason does things as a guide to make sure that everybody's gonna have a chance to shoot at a pig, but everybody's gonna be able to do it safely. And after that, everybody got to go down to the range where he actually did some practice uh, of walking, setting up the sticks, putting the rifle up, turning the scopes on, taking the rifle off safety and firing a couple shots. So they got to do a live fire drill and see how everything worked and got a little bit of range time in and had some fun. So the range time is finished, and now it's time for the real deal. Get the rifles packed up, get everything in the trucks, and let's head on out to the first spot. So as we get to the first spot, it's dark, we start walking, and Jason and his dad both noticed it at the same time. They said they could feel the wind on the back of their neck, and sure enough, as we are walking into the first spot, Jason had a couple pictures on his camera and the last picture he had was the the, uh, the hogs taken off. They winded us on the way in. Um, it happens. So fortunately, he was also getting pictures of hogs on another camera. So now it's time to bring everybody back to the truck again, pack everything back up in the trucks, load up, drive out through the gate, drive over to the next property and sneak in this next property. So we're walking into the second spot now, and it was a little bit longer of a walk for us, which was, um, for me, it was kind of fun because I got to use the thermal and look around in the field and I can see uh, what were deer bedded down in the field or deer running off. Uh, we could also see armadillos here and there. Uh, for the hunters, it's, it's a little bit tougher because they're just kind of walking in the dark and following along behind the guide and kind of listen to what uh, the guides were talking about but we get in there and Jason is still getting pictures on his phone real time of a group of pigs in front of the camera at this spot um, so let's let's uh, I guess just stop talking and let's check out the hunt and see how it unfolds
right, that was kind of fun. Um, there was a big group of pigs there. And the funny part was when this whole thing started, everybody saw the same pig. And I think out of the, I think all five guys shot at the same big pig um, all at the same time in the beginning. And then as the pigs started scattering, um, it, it just gets crazy. And that's why Jason got his father to help out. Jason kind of took the right side of the line. His father was helping on the left. And as the pigs were running to the right and the left, the guides were able to tell the hunters, okay, left side, shift left, right side, turn right. And that way everybody's not swinging rifle barrels around. Uh, it, it, it's, it's really things you don't think about as a hunter um, that the guide needs to be that coordinated and make sure that there can be five or six people with rifles operating safely in the dark. And this isn't, um, this isn't military. These aren't guys that have done this a whole lot. Uh, in some cases, just people, it's, this is the first time even, even shooting a rifle like this and the first time shooting one at night. So the guides are there to make sure that everything happens safely. So now, as the pigs are running, the hunters are shooting, uh, I'm watching some pigs, the other guides are, and the hunters are watching other pigs, and I can definitely see three pigs that have been hit. And now, after all the pigs are gone, we've got to figure out a way to get all these pigs. Um, so Jason has all the hunters lean all the rifles up against the tree, uh, and one hunter now has one rifle just in case we need it. And we go walking across the field to find the first pig. So we, uh, we find the first pig and we check that pig out and it was a decent sized pig. It was, you know, still neat. And then we go try and walk around out. <laughs> it's funny using the thermals because you can be looking out in a, in a field and not see anything because that field may dip down just a little bit and the pig is laying there dead on the other side of that little little slope and you won't see him until you walk up on him. So, so we go and find the second pig and, and uh, there's a lot of jokes about who actually shot the pig, who hit it, who missed it, everything else. And now we realize that there's the big pig left and we've got to go find the big pig. And as everybody shot in the beginning, you can see that the pig was hit in the back end and it kind of dragged itself off out of view and we couldn't see it anymore. So we all go walking over to where the last area was where this pig was. And as we're kind of standing there, Jason goes to get Lieutenant Dan again. And um, now I'm using the thermal, but I can't see anything. But what I don't realize is that I didn't have a flashlight on and I would have been able to see the briar bed that was right in front of me. So as I'm looking with the thermal not seeing anything, it's because I'm looking at a briar bed and I hear something close thrashing around in the woods and it was a little unnerving knowing that I was that close to his boar and I couldn't see it and I had no idea it was actually there. So uh, let's watch how this uh, the end unfolds because it's it's action packed right up to the end. So uh, Jason goes and gets Lieutenant Dan again and, and we see what happens now. Dog, good dog. Bad son of a gun right there. Okay, go ahead and, uh, well, let's wait till Dan circles out. Okay, take your aim, but leave your safety on. Can you see the hog okay? Yeah. Okay, we don't want to head shoot him. I want you to shoot him right in the shoulder. Okay, is that good? All right, now wait just a second. Okay, put your safety off, finger off the trigger. Wait, wait, wait. Now, shoot. Okay, safety on. Dan, get out! Let me see the gun, please. Down. Hold this, hold this, hold this, hold this. Get out, Dan, get out. Dan! There you go. There you go. <laughs> Again, when you're thinking about this, remember now that it's pitch black. Um, we did turn lights on when we found this boar, uh, but he was still alive. And it's 
they're a mean animal with really, really sharp teeth. Um, so now we're trying to do this with a dog, a hunter with a rifle, a guide, and other guys there and, and do this safely in the dark. Um, but Jason does this day in and day out. He does it all the time. He knew exactly what to do. The hunter shot the pig, um, but the boar was still flopping and, and Jason uh, wanted to get the boar de dead um, and finished off and also didn't want to take the chance of his dog getting hurt so he rushed in there and, and finished it off. And now again, um, the hunt's done. And uh, everybody's high-fiving and having a good time and reliving the, the event. You, you know, hunters, we know exactly what happens. And um, so we bring everything, we load the pigs up in the trucks and we head back to Jason's house. Got some great pictures. Everybody had a good time talking about uh, how the hunt unfolded and who shot at what and who missed and who's a better shot and you know the usual joking around and having a good time with your friend's stuff. Um, and uh, so now, as the, uh, the hunters head out, they're, they're happy, they had a great day, they, they were able to kill a bunch of pigs and have a good time doing it, and they got to do it not only um, with the rifles, but they also got to do it with the knives and the dogs, which is an interesting way to hunt. And here it is now, Jason's stuck cleaning up again and um, <laughs> getting, getting his, uh, all his stuff organized, all the rifles unloaded um, uh, and safely put away and cleaning up after everybody and we finally head into the rack about, oh God, it must have been one o'clock in the morning, I think. <laughs> so um, for any of you that are considering a, um, a career in hunting guide, which as a hunter, it always sounded like an awesome idea. It sounded like a great time and it's fun. I, I've, I've had a great time when I was with Jason in Oklahoma. I also had a great time with him in Texas. We had a lot of action. We had a lot of laughs. Um, the, the hunting was phenomenal, but the part that you don't see as the hunter is everything that goes in behind the scenes to make this work. The late nights, the early mornings, the making sure you have enough equipment for everybody, making sure the equipment works cooking meals for people, having something to keep them occupied while you're cooking the meals and keep them engaged. Um, there's a lot to it. It's not just grabbing a guy and walking in the woods and shooting an animal. There's, there's a lot more to make it fun. I had a really great time with Jason as, as I did the first time I met him and the other guys from Team Swamp Stomp. They run a um, top-notch operation and now they've even added a, uh, a cabin that you can stay in when you go down there and hunt with them. For me, between the cabin and the meals, that makes it worthwhile. I didn't need to kill a pig. I got fed well and I had a nice place to stay. Um, so if you're looking at doing a hunt, definitely uh, get in touch with Jason Meisenheimer and, and Team Swamp Stomp the LLC. They've got access to, I believe, Oh, something like 10,000 acres of land or something that he can take people hunting on. And he does, not only does he do pig hunts, they also do some uh, quail hunts. Uh, I know he's running an alligator hunt down there. Uh, there's a lot of different things he's doing as well as fishing and bow fishing. So it's pretty much a uh, outdoorsman's paradise in Texas. And Jason's got his hands in all of it with uh, Team Swamp Stomp. So, if you're looking to book a hunt and you want to go out and have a good time with some fun people and have a, um, a great overall outdoor experience, then Team Swamp Stomp's the way to go. Uh, so until next time when I can get down to Texas and see Jason again and, and Frank and hopefully get on a pig and um, get my hands bloody, I wish everybody, as always, nothing but tight lines and short blood trails.